Hey guys, this is Sidewinder back for Community StarCraft 2. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Spanishiwa's Ice Fisher build. And yes, this is the one, the only Vile Spanishiwa who's getting so incredibly popular lately. Playing in a lot of tournaments around. Not quite the highest level of tournaments, but I do expect him to see him there uh, soon. But we're going to be basically taking a look at the build that he runs versus all matchups. But in this case, he's going to be fighting fanatic MSI's KR who is a Terran and we're gonna basically go through the build and show you the way it works and the way you can run it yourself if you would like to. Uh, this is a very cool build. Uh, I have to admit that when I first saw this build uh, it was kind of a, a light just kind of ding on in my head and I thought this is exactly the way that you're supposed to play Zerg. Uh, he changes so dramatically between his um, his drone production and his unit production slash tech ramping so it's it's very cool uh, everything goes together very well so we'll see exactly where uh, he decides to go or rather excuse me where we'll see exactly how this build operates and I'll explain how everything is supposed to work keeping in mind uh, this is no slouch whatsoever this player is uh, in Fnatic MSI who fields such players as TT1, Sen and uh, Phoenix, so very good players there. What Spanishiwa is going to do as your first move, uh, I've he does this in this video is a little bit differently than his official build order. He will obviously scout with his overlord, which is very normal, uh, but what he will do is he will actually scout on 12 to see if there's any sort of weird cheese or something going on. I don't think he does it in this game in particular because this is from a tournament and he's already played, I believe, a couple of games against his opponent. Um, but nevertheless, what he's going to do is he's going to pull a drone and drop his hatch on 16. And he is going to go hatch first, so he's going to drop his hatch right here, obviously. And then immediately afterwards, as soon as he gets the resources, he's going to put down his spawning pool on 15. But the reason, or rather the a very important uh, part of this build, is not taking any gas for a while. We'll show you when he takes his gas. Here goes his scout, scouting on 15, but he is going to throw down that pool as soon as he gets 200 resources see it come up in just a moment plop there it goes uh, so what he has at this point is a little bit later f hatch first it's kind of an eco hatch first and he does this specifically against Terran now I, I know he does do this build against every race matchup we're gonna just focus on Zerg versus Terran for now and I will post the other racial matchups and what you need to look out for now the reason that this build works so well is because Spanishua is a very good at scouting you need to be scouting your opponent constantly uh, you need to be always aware of what they're doing, whether it's with overlords, whether it's with drones, or whether it's with some scouting zerglings. You need to be scouting constantly, otherwise if you just run this build blindly and the Terran is doing some super cheesy play or one base all in or something like that, you're in trouble. So you need to scout a lot. That's the only reason that this build works. So if you're not brushed up on your Terran scouting, brush up on it understand the timings of Terran players and understand what they're capable of at what times in the game obviously his bunker is just or not his bunker his barracks is just now finished uh, and he does have one marine on the field it's 16 supply or roughly about three minutes into the game is when that first barracks is going to finish if they get it on a normal timing but if you see an unusual number of marines or anything like that you need to throw down some spine crawlers and transfer them over to your natural and hold them off that way now if Spanishiwa does experience any sort of pressure he's going to hold it off with nothing but queens and speedless zerglings and spine crawlers so be very good with your queen and zergling work if you expect to run this build regularly nevertheless we'll go ahead and press on here so Spanishiwa does see there's just one marine out he's not terribly worried and his overlord sees everything that's going on on the mineral line it sees no gas at all whatsoever and he's going to keep scouting and KR is going to be throwing up a command center which uh, is going to make Spanishua very comfortable and able to run his build. So from this point, um, all you're going to be doing is producing drones as hard as you can. There are a few little uh, nuances, and we'll go ahead and pull up the production tab here so you can see. As soon as the spawning pool finishes, you're going to start a pair of zerglings, and these zerglings are going to be for scouting only so that you can get every drone mining where it needs to be. He's probably going to pull this drone and put it back on one of the mineral lines. But you're going to scout with your zergling, kind of poke in here a little bit, see what's going on. That'll basically warn you if anything weird is happening. And he's also going to hold a watchtower with his zergling so that his scouting, again, 
is the backbone of this build. It's the reason this build works. And he's going to start getting queens as soon as he can too. So he's going to start a queen in his main, and he's going to start a queen at his natural as soon as he has the resources to afford it. And there it goes. But all your larva at this point is going to be spent on drones. And you're going to drone your way up to 40 drones, assuming your scouting information does not alert you to anything weird going on. Uh, and that would be like a quick three or four or even six racks coming up or Hellions or something like that. But this build even still should hold off Hellions if you are able to get your drones out fast enough. So this queen comes out and the first thing he's going to do with this queen is he's going to drop a creep tumor. And uh, he's going to connect his two bases together with creep as soon as possible rather than barf on this hatchery and get more larva out of it because he can... He's just basically spending all of his money right now on queens and drones and overlords. And it's still about the time in the game where his economy doesn't demand that he starts throwing up on this hatchery. So he's going to connect these two uh, with creep. And the reason why is so that he can bring extra queens down uh, and he has more space to fight if the Terran goes for a quick advancement. Uh, one quick note, it's just general Zerg versus Terran in general, but if you're fighting Hellions, which you won't see on the field for just a little while, it'll probably be around like maybe five minutes at the absolute earliest if they send just one. Um, you're going to want to bring one of your fat queens over here, plop them on this ramp, and protect your main from being harassed at all by Hellions. So that's just one quick note, and part of the reason why he connects these is so he can maneuver his queens back and forth a lot e more easily. So we're going to keep going. As soon as this first queen is done, he's going to start a second queen. And same thing with uh, this one. He does have a second queen queued up. And once everything gets settled, uh, two queens are going to be for creep spreading. You can see him pooping out more creep right now. And uh, the other two are going to be for throwing up on those hatcheries. Spanishua is almost at the time where it's time to throw down your gas and start teching really, really hard. And you need to tech into a uh, counter for what your opponent is going to be doing. So uh, we're going to see him uh, produce an overlord, obviously, to get not supply blocked. Uh, this queen is almost done, so he's almost where he wants to be. He is throwing up a spine crawler here, positioning his queens defensively while he gets a quick scout in with his zergling. Uh, just as soon as he knows that there's no real pressure coming. I mean, he only sees five marines on the field. This is really not that much to worry about. A couple of queens and a spine crawler and even uh, f a few drones, if he needs to pull them, will handle those marines just fine. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. And what Spanishiwa is going to do is get up to 40 drones, and he's going to take all four of his gas. And then uh, he's going to obviously replace those drones that he just made. So 40 is up right now. We're going to see him pull uh, drones to make all four gases. One, two, three, four. Now from this point uh, is going to be where you're going to switch into unit production mode as soon as you get a couple more waves of, zerg of not zerglings, drones out. But we're going to explain the time when it is to start going into that unit production mode and explain why it's important to know when to do that. So his first two uh, barf cycles are pretty much done and he's going to decide whether he needs to produce zerglings or drones at this point because this is when hellion timings would hit. This is when uh, big marine attacks would hit. So this is kind of his uh, point of transition. Now he's going to uh, get a scout off here in just a second. And as soon as he's up to this 44 drones, is going to be whether he needs to decide to produce units or not once again. So pretty much every time your, your larva cycles are up is when you're going to need to get a scout off and decide, okay, do I need more drones or do I... Well, it's not a matter of needing drones. It's a matter of do I really need to put units out right now in order to not die. So, uh, again, his scouting information is the, re the, the reason that this build works. And if his scouting information reveals that uh, no pressure is coming, he's going to take a fast third, which is what he's doing right now. And, uh, and yes, so that's basically how to spend your larva up until this point. The second part of this is, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and keep going, is as soon as you get 100 gas, you're going to start your lair. And then your next 100 gas is going to be on zergling speed. So, and you're going to do those in that order so that you can start teching really, really hard. Uh, once you put your lair up is basically when you can decide what you want to do with all this gas that you're going to be bringing in, which is, it's a lot of gas to be on, quite frankly. And what he's also going to do as soon as he starts his zergling speed, he's going to drop two evolution chambers and start e his plus one carapace and either his plus one melee or his plus one uh, ranged attacks. Almost all the time he'll go for the plus one uh, 
melee only because this build is a huge ramp into your tier 3 units like infestors, uh, zerg or not zerglings, ultralisks or um, excuse me, broodlords. So all three of those get the bonus of this melee attack which is why he starts it right away and then from this point it, you're just going to make units based upon what you scout. Right now Spanishwa is getting a scout in by sending the slow overlord in all he sees on the field right now is Marines, so it's all good. What's he going to do? He's going to throw up a Banelings nest. And a small team of Banelings will handle these Marines just fine. Uh, so from this point, as we all know, or all may know, Zerg is the reactionary race. You need to put units on the field that are going to beat what your opponent has. It's pretty rare in which you are the one dictating what the other person needs to be. Now really quickly we can see an infestation pit going down so that he can get on his hive as soon as possible or start putting out infestors depending on what he really needs and uh, one thing about this third now that it is finished he is going to take the gases here fairly soon considering he does really like to ramp up in his tech uh, but this this third is going to get saturated and uh, until he just well I mean what he's really doing right now is he's trying to decide if this force of marines needs to have more attention paid to it via producing units so he's going to produce units until he feels safe and uh, he's going to you know, keep putting everything in, in motion until he feels like he's ready to start droning again. So you can see uh, part of this build is the concept in which if you mixed your larva between drones and army units, you're kind of, it shows that you're not really ready to, um, shows you're not really ready to make a hard decision on what you want to do and it kind of can hurt you. So he's going into all-out unit production mode for a while until he feels like he has enough to deal with the Terran forces. And one other thing I neglected to mention is that as soon as your lair is done, uh, go ahead and morph your Overseer so that you can fly in there and get another scout. Again, he's scouted so many times, he has full information on what this Terran player is doing. That's exactly how you want to play Zerg. So we'll go ahead and watch the rest of this. Now, one other thing he has been doing we haven't really paid attention to is his creep spreading is insane. Uh, you do want to pay a lot of attention to creep spreading in addition to this. Yeah, there's a lot to keep track of, but this creep spread is so important because of the speed bonus that your Zerglings and your Banelings and whatever else you have are going to get. Um, so definitely spread your creep in addition to all this other stuff. You can even see this queen down here pooping out creep to connect what will be another hatchery going down here if the game lasts long enough. So uh, more, a ton of gas heavy upgrades are coming down. He is deciding who wants infestors and look at this, he's timing his pathogen glands upgrades to finish as soon as infestors are supposed to pop out. So you can see the timing, it's going to be about 20 seconds and these infestors have about 27 more seconds. So he's being extremely efficient with the, techs that, with the tech that he is choosing. But now that he has this kind of economy on two bases, he has the army out to deal with whatever the Terran is going to be presenting. Uh, he has a third ready to get started with drones. Um, he's in a good shape right now. All he needs to worry about right now is cleaning up this attack, and he has plenty of units to clean up the attack. He's going to be, obviously, with these kind of engagements, you don't want to throw stuff away. So he's going to be very tactical, um, and you can also see his plus two, plus two started on his Zerg, or rather on his, uh, his well, it's basically Zergling upgrades, but his melee and his carapace. So uh, he's just putting out the stuff that he needs, getting upgraded as fast as he can, and then usually what you'll see out of Spanishiwa is him choosing the tier 3 tech pattern, or rather tech path, of either Ultralisks or um, Infestors. We're going to go ahead and watch this fight, since this is definitely all about fighting. I want to note this insane spreading here of KR's Marines. This is great micro of those Marines, but this is also really good work with these Zerglings and Banelings kind of flanking around making sure that he cleans up as much of that as possible. And holy crap, look at this. As soon as he fends off that push, 18 drones are in production. That's ridiculous. And he does have them all rallied to this third base. So that he will basically have this base saturated in one larva cycle. This gives you an idea of if you set yourself up correctly, Zerg, your production potential is enormous. Uh, if you are another race able to put out 18 workers at one time, you would be really jealous.